space, hostile yet beautiful, a haven for the countless worlds that populate its vastness. It beckons us to venture from the safety of our home and to explore the mysteries of the universe. Since humans have walked the earth, we've gazed up at the distant stars illuminating our night sky. We've dreamed about the mysteries that lie among those stars. Before we can explore them, we first must face a test of our own endurance during a manned flight to the outer solar system. Join me as we discover Saturn in this Orbiter 2016 video series. Hello there, welcome to this new Orbiter 2016 video series. I'm Tex and I'll be your host throughout this video series. So I'm very excited to bring this one to you. We're going to be journeying out to Saturn and there's going to be a lot of unique challenges along the way. Uh, let me first begin by giving a special thanks to Dimitri. He has spent um, a lot of time really helping me out with some of the challenges that uh, we'll be facing in this mission. Um, so his expertise and his guidance has been absolutely invaluable, so uh, a big thank you to him. Uh, this series would definitely not have been possible without him, so uh, thanks to him I'm able to bring this series to you guys. And uh, we're actually talking about doing um, a joint video uh, type of uh, series or flight uh, together that uh, you know in the future we can perhaps uh, share with you guys. So. With all of that said, this is going to be episode zero, and we're not actually going to get off the ground in this episode. We're going to do a lot of planning, and we're going to be putting some data in spreadsheets and whatnot. So if you're not really interested in this side of things, then you might want to wait for episode one, where we will actually be launching the uh, dragon on top of a Falcon 9. And that is going to be used to get our crew members up to Deep Star, which is sitting in Earth orbit, about 400 kilometers in altitude, just waiting for the crew to get there, and uh, so we can get out to Saturn. So what we're going to do is um, I've actually done a little, uh, uh, a little bit of um, well, I've done quite a bit of uh, pre-planning before uh, recording this and I did that just because there was so much to do with a flight like this that you really have to sort of plan some things in advance instead of just going off the cuff and I wanted uh, wanted to really showcase you know some some unique challenges that you can face when you want to do particular flights like this um, but basically the gist is, is that we're going to we're going to get out to Saturn and when, when we get there, we want to encounter Titan and get an orbit around Titan. That's going to be our first real destination. Um, now, to make the flight a little bit more interesting, I wanted to also use a slingshot past Jupiter. So I figured this would be interesting because it would give us a chance to sort of have a flyby uh, at Jupiter and we can, you know, enjoy the views as we pass Jupiter instead of just going straight from Earth to Saturn. Now, there, of course, is the option of, you know, minimizing delta V at all costs, and we could do something like slinging the Earth twice or Venus and working our way through the inner solar system until we could eventually get out to uh, Saturn. Now, the reason I'm not doing that is because this is supposed to be a manned flight, so we sort of have to balance the total flight days with the delta V we're actually going to be expending. Now, if a real manned flight was going out to Saturn, obviously they're not going to be able to sling around the inner planets forever. The, they need to get out there uh, because we do have limited resources. Now, unfortunately, with the Deep Star uh, vessel, we, we don't actually have limited resources when it comes to locks, for example. It just doesn't simulate that like the Aero Freighter or the XR series. So that side of it is a little bit of a bummer, but we're still going to uh, calculate our flight time days in the same manner that we would if we had to worry about locks. 
Um, also, the Deep Star has like a stupid amount of delta velocity, so we're not going to fill the tank up completely on Deep Star. We're we're going to we're only going to take what we need. Uh, we'll have probably more than we need in the end, but we're we're only going to take what we think we're going to need or close to that. Um, okay, so with that said, the first thing, uh, because I want to do a slingshot past Jupiter, it does complicate the planning a little bit because it's not as simple as just finding a, a launch window to Jupiter, which, you know, occurs pretty frequently, but when you want to sling, uh, I'm sorry, to Saturn, uh, but when you want to slingshot past another planet, in this case Jupiter, then we need to find a launch window that gets us to Jupiter at the right time so that we can slingshot past Jupiter over to Saturn. Okay, now what I'm going to use is a website here, the NASA Ames Research Center uh, Trajectory Browser, and this is going to allow me to find a launch window uh, where we can set up a sling. And this is helpful because if you just go into Transex totally blind looking for slings, uh, it can it can be frustrating and take a lot of time. So in the interest of saving time, I'm going to use this website. I'll put a link to this in the description below if you'd like to check it out. So we'll start by going to Trajectory Planner and we'll uncheck NEOs on the custom list. I've already done this, so it should be auto-filled. I guess not. We're going to put in Jupiter and Saturn. Just show you guys how to use this. Uh, the mission type is going to be a round trip and rendezvous. Uh, for the launch year, let's start with our current year, 2017. <clears throat> and for the in, okay, for the launch year, we're going to search for a range of acceptable launch years between 2017 and let's just say 2030. Now the max duration of the mission, uh, because it is a manned flight, we want to keep it somewhat realistic. So nothing over 10 years. So let's put in 10 years there. And for max delta V, uh, in order to increase our chances of finding a trajectory, uh, we're going to put in something like 17 kilometers per second. Uh, we will stick with minimizing delta V, but we could choose the minimize duration. Uh, but we'll stick to the minimizing the delta V option, and we're going to hit search. Now it's, uh, it's come up with a couple of different options here. And the one that I'm actually going to go with is this one right here, the bottom one. You'll see the top one is actually, the route here is actually, we would depart Earth, come back around, slingshot past Earth, out to Jupiter, slingshot past Jupiter, um, and then Jupiter back to Earth. I'm not sure, I put in Jupiter and Saturn, right? So I'm not sure actually why this plan came up. That's the first time that's happened, but Obviously, we wouldn't pick that one because it doesn't take us to Saturn. But if you look at the one below it, we have departing Earth, slingshot Jupiter, arrive at Saturn, and then coming home, Saturn straight back to Earth. Um, it also tells you uh, some data here, which this is what's really important to us. Earth departure, January 18, 2018. So the current date as of recording this video is September 6th, 2017, so it's kind of cool that uh, our departure from Earth is uh, in the near future. Um, and then you have destination arrival at uh, Saturn, September 29, 2023, so that's a lot of, uh, a lot of years to get out there, but uh, not as many as it'll take to get back. Um, destination departure is uh, January 19, 2024, and then Earth return is January 14, 2028. So we're looking at stay time, 112 days uh, at Saturn. So that gives us just shy of four months, I believe. So that should be enough time for us to explore some moons. And I think after four months, it, it is probably pretty realistic and feasible to expect that the crew would be returning back to Earth. Uh, it's unfortunate that most of the mission duration is going to be spent traversing the solar system, but uh, this is the way it works when you go to the outer solar system. So you can see our total mission duration is just shy of 10 years. I'm not going to concern myself too much about the, the delta V that is shown here because what we find in our plan on TransX is going to vary from this. This just gives us uh, you know, an idea of when the launch date occurs. Uh, so most importantly, what we get from this is the alignment of the planets for the sling. So if we click on view, you can see that, of course, the sun is in the center. Earth is right here. 
This is Jupiter's orbit and then Saturn's orbit. Here is Jupiter's location and here is Saturn's location as of the launch date. So if you actually hit play, you'll see our spacecraft departs the Earth, coasts out to Jupiter, slingshots Jupiter right there, and then we coast for quite a while longer out to Saturn. We encounter Saturn here and then there's a brief gap where we are uh, staying at Saturn for almost four months it was, and then we depart Saturn here and head straight back to Earth. So this is a really cool uh, planner that you can use that takes the guesswork out of finding a launch window. Um, okay, what I'm uh, going to do is go ahead and calculate our uh, transx plans. Now I have already done this just to save time because there is so much stuff that we need to cover in this part of the video. But I will explain what I did so that you guys, if you want to try and set up your plan on your own, you can. And uh, I didn't mention, but I will, I will be including scenarios for this entire series for you guys to follow along with. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hop into the glass cockpit. And this is a scenario that I use that just has the Delta Glider sitting on the runway at Cape Canaveral. Uh, and it is the only vessel in the scenario and it uses the current date and time. Again, I said it was September 6th of 2017. Now I have this vessel here on Earth. I also want to put one. I'm going to create another Delta Glider. Let's call it GL-02. And I'm going to put this one on Saturn so that we can calculate our, um, our return. So let's put Saturn, there we go. Whoops, I forgot to put the landing gear down. But, oh, there you go, we're already at Saturn. Series over, just kidding. Uh, okay, so let's leave that guy there and we're back here on Earth. That was really quick. <laughs> let's open up uh, TransX here. Okay, now the first thing, of course, you wanna do is uh, go to Escape and hit Forward. And then uh, the planets are listed in order of their mass, I believe. So smallest to largest. So since we're going to Jupiter first, if you go backwards, should be the first one there. We'll hit view to go to the eject plan. On this side, we're going to go forward, forward to stage three. Let's change graph projection to focus and hit view for the encounter view. Now, again, I've already calculated the flight plan from Earth to Jupiter with the sling to Saturn because that, that really takes the most amount of time. So what I'm going to do is uh, just input what I found in here. Now one thing that you can do if you're not familiar with TransX is you can go to adjust and choose the auto min option for all of your variables. So you have prograde, eject date, outward, and change plane. Um, if you do that, it will find a plan for you, so similar to the way the target intercept program works with IMFD. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that, that's something you can do. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put in my uh, the data that I got. So we're going to hit enter, and looking at my notes, it is 9,693 meters per second in prograde. And then we will go to the date and our ejection date. Should be 58134.1408. Very good. Now we will go to outward and let's hit enter. Outward was only 105 meters per second. And finally, we will go to the plane change here, and that's going to be negative 473.9 meters per second. Okay, and you can see here is our arrival at uh, Jupiter. Now we're not worried about setting up a super close approach or anything like that because we are slingshotting Jupiter out to Saturn. So we're not going to mess around with doing the encounter here. Let me just go to forward here and hit view. And we're going to change uh, here to escape again, hit forward. We're going to go back and select Saturn and hit view to go to the sling direct view. Now let's go forward again to the final stage our encounter, let me change this one to graph projection. There it is, graph projection focus, press view, and we are at the encounter view, okay. Now all that essentially needs to happen here is you can see that here, okay, the sun is in the center, 
this inner red circle, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the red circle out here is Jupiter's orbit and then the outer red circle. So I guess the inner red circle is Jupiter's orbit. The outer red circle is Saturn's orbit. Uh, here is this line right here is indicating where Jupiter currently is. <clears throat> and this red line here is indicating where Saturn currently is. Now our trajectory is actually going to take us with an intercept here with Jupiter. So we would actually intercept with Jupiter right here. Uh, and then we would slingshot past Jupiter and we need to arrive at Saturn somewhere over here. Now you can see the, the dashed lines here. This dashed line here is indicating this is where Saturn, as of now, if I don't change anything, this is where Saturn currently would be when we got out to Saturn's orbit. However, we would actually be way over here. So the idea behind a slingshot is that you change the angle of your trajectory so that you can swing past one planet out to another one. So you're essentially just changing the angle of your, your trajectory in orbit around the sun. You're not actually increasing your velocity per se. So what we need to do is uh, we're going to inherit the velocity, which is uh, chosen by default. We're going to change to the outward angle variable, and we're going to just increase that. And you'll notice that as I'm doing that, that's bringing our our hypothetical position here. Uh, it's swinging. It's swinging our hypothetical orbit and our position here over to where Saturn will be at that time. So we want those lines to be overlapped. So we're just going to keep doing this, and you'll notice that the closest approach is coming down. Uh, we do have an encounter now because Saturn is so massive. We're 51 million kilometers uh, away from Saturn with this encounter, but it is an encounter. But we want something closer than that. So I'll keep increasing this, and uh, we've got uh, a much closer encounter now. Now, again, I've already calculated this to save time, but uh, one thing I will show you before I input the, the angle that I already came up with, it's already pretty close as it is. But if I go back to stage three and you change view, make sure view is not on setup, you want view on slingshot, um, it's already pretty darn close. But the important thing that you want to see here when you're setting up the slingshot past Jupiter is you want relative inclination on zero and you want PE ratio on one or as near to one as you can get it. So this is probably close enough to one, but we're just gonna put in what I've already uh, calculated. So if we actually set that view up here and go to this view, let's uh, manually input the outward angle, which was 60.1344 degrees. Nope, we need to delete all of that. 60.1344 degrees. And the angle was only 0 0.1000. Okay, now you can see that PE ratio is now basically on one, relative inclination is pretty much on zero. So if I go forward to the last stage encounter, you can see that we have now have a minimum altitude of 12,000 kilometers above Saturn. That's nice and low. Now, of course, we are going to actually encounter Titan, technically. That's going to be our first destination, but that's going to involve... Um, well, that's going to that's gonna involve a little bit of planning, and we'll see that in a moment. But uh, with this, we have the data that we need to fill in our spreadsheet. So let's go to stage two here, and let's go to stage three here. Let's go to the setup view. And we're going to input the data from our plan here into our spreadsheet uh, just for reference and also to calculate our delta V for the entire flight. So let me pull up. The spreadsheet that I have okay all right so beginning at the top um, the estimated plane change before ejection I don't I'm not gonna be able to put something in there yet because we are of course are sitting on the earth right now in this Delta glider when we calculated this plan but we are going to be using the deep star which is currently in earth orbit so there is going to be a plane change necessary uh, in order to get Deep Star aligned with the plan, with the inclination for the plan. So we will calculate that when the time comes, but until we get up to Deep Star, we're going to leave that blank. Uh, the parking orbit is uh, around 400 kilometers is where Deep Star is currently orbiting. 
Okay, so now the ejection date, uh, we're going to get the injection date, the encounter date, prograde um, velocity, outward plane change, and counter velocity. We're going to get all of this information from TransX here. So you can see um, here is the prograde velocity, here is the eject date, it's just cycling th through the variables. Here is our outward velocity, here is our uh, change plane velocity. Over here we have the encounter velocity, encounter uh, the encounter date in, in MJD format. Also here, make a note of this on the bottom, it has total um, flight days. Uh, is 584.3 days and then total delta velocity uh, is listed here on the bottom and this will be automatically calculated in the spreadsheet so these numbers should be the same in the spreadsheet as they are here or else if they're not uh, we have a problem so let me go back to the spreadsheet and let's input this data so beginning with the eject date that was 58 one three four point one four oh eight so five eight one three four point one four oh eight we want to make sure we get those dates right the encounter date was five eight seven one eight point four six seven one okay our prograde velocity for the plan is nine thousand six hundred ninety three meters per second our outward velocity, I believe it was 105. Yes, it was. That's 105 meters per second, not very much. And our plane change velocity is negative 473.9 meters per second. And counter velocity, this is at Jupiter, of course, was 10,750 meters per second. Okay, so this is what's auto-calculated, the total delta V. That was given to us on the bottom of TransX. It's shown as 9,705 uh, and change meters per second. And the, uh, uh, the total flight days was 584. So if we take a look at TransX, that uh, is exactly the same. So that looks good. Now, this number here, the injection, or start, starting with this one, the injection delta V, this is different from the total delta V from the plan. So this is the injection delta V from our parking orbit at 400 kilometers in altitude. So if we take a look at TransX stage one here, you can see delta V right here. This is the injection delta V. However, we're sitting on the ground here at Earth. So um, this is not actually accurate. Uh, the number on the spreadsheet is going to be more accurate. So let's go back to our spreadsheet and uh, let's see so that takes care of our our initial plan from Earth to Jupiter but now let's put in some data for the sling so we want to take a look and put in our sling uh, periapsis MJD so the date that we reach periapsis at uh, Jupiter uh, the encounter date at Saturn the outward angle number inclination angle number this is really just for reference um, the PEPL radius, PE velocity, so our encounter velocity at Saturn, our capture delta V at Saturn, and our delta V to circularize our orbit around Saturn. So let's go over to TransX again, and let's go forward here, hit view on that side, and let's go to the final stage here. And this is where we're going to get some of this data. So we have the PEMJD is here. Um, on this side, we can get the things like the PE velocity, capture delta, circular, uh, circularize, God, I hate that word, the circularization delta um, is here. Uh, so we're going to get all of that information to put in the spreadsheet there. But the PEPL radius is actually here. Press view. There it is right here. So. It shows it's 14.62. Now, I believe, I may be mistaken on this, but I believe that this is telling us the distance that we're actually going to pass Jupiter for the slingshot. And I believe this is referring to how many Jupiter radiuses we will be away. So I think this is saying 14.62 Jupiter radiuses away from Jupiter. So if that's correct, um, 
basically it's not going to be like a super close pass by Jupiter. It's going to be close. Jupiter's going to be, we're going to have a nice view of Jupiter, but we're not going to be passing like right by the atmosphere or some really crazy low altitude or anything like that. So, um, and I believe that will cover everything that we need to input in here. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and let's uh, put this information in. So the, the sling PEMJD was 58713.5219. Again, I'm getting that from right here. You can see this is Jupiter and this is our slingshot past Jupiter right there. So, okay, and then the encounter MJD at Saturn, uh, which will just take the PE, the PE periapsis MJD was 59403.5219. 8769, 59403.8769, yes. Okay, and then the outward angle, which we can get from stage four, was uh, 60.1344 degrees. And the inclination angle was 0 0.1000, I believe it was. Yes, it was. Okay degrees and the PEPL radius was 14.62 our PE velocity at Saturn was 35,310 meters per second Whew. capture Delta uh, 2,527 meet no just kidding 2,527 meters per second there we go uh, the delta V to circularize the orbit is 12,130 meters per second. Yes, that's correct. Wow, that's a lot of delta V. Um, okay, and then we have the total flight days here uh, from Jupiter to Saturn. So here is from Earth to Jupiter and Jupiter to Saturn. So let me just because I have the total mission duration days down here, it's not being calculated correctly yet because we haven't uh, put in the days here for Saturn to Earth. But if I just do 584 plus 690 divide by 365, because my math sucks, that's 3.49 years uh, from Earth to Saturn. Okay, and all right, so that takes care of our trip out to Saturn. Let's hop over back into Orbiter here. And let's go to our glider on the surface of Saturn. And all right, um, the first thing is our encounter at Saturn is 59403.8769. Let me just take a look. When is that? That's five nine. Nope, just kidding. MJD, 59, encounter 59403, just call it point 0.8. Oh, God, I hate when I do that. I don't know why I do that. Okay, 59403.8. So that is July 8th of 2021. And taking a look at the trajectory planner let's just see what it was destination arrival was September 29 of 2023 so we're actually getting there way earlier is that right five nine let's go back here to our plan so Saturn encounter five nine four oh three five nine four oh three so that is that is correct Okay, well, um, so we're getting there earlier than the plan that we found on the NASA Ames website. So again, we want to make sure that we have our mission, total mission duration at 10 years or less. Uh, regardless, uh, it was estimating 112 days at Saturn. Okay, so if we go back to Orbiter here and uh, 
All right, let's go to escape forward. We're going to go to earth. Um, well, I guess we'll just start, we'll put in some negative prograde velocity, of course. We need to go down to Earth's orbit there. We'll just start with something like that. And let's go to the eject date and let's enter five, let's enter the, uh, the encounter date. So we, we don't start before that date. So our encounter date at Saturn was 59403, yep, 59403.800, that's close enough. Okay, so starting at our encounter date, so that we ensure that we don't uh, try and go back to Earth before we even get to Saturn, um, let's see what we can come up with here. Now, I did already calculate this plan. However, I think I was in orbit around Saturn when I calculated this, so if I put the variables in that I already calculated, it's not going to be correct. Um, let's just put in... I'm just going to put in the uh, the data from the previous plan that I already calculated instead of this one because, again, we're not going to be sitting on the surface of Saturn when we're calculating this plan. So let's uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that because we're already running pretty long in the video here. Okay, so just let me double check the dates here. Eject was 59506.0 and Earth Encounter 6179.3. Point nine. I just had to double check that because that, that is a lot of days. Um, but there you go. Okay, so I believe that's everything. Yeah, the only thing as far as Delta V goes, uh, we're, we have not been able to input this yet because, again, we'll have to do that once we get up to Deep Star. So that will impact our total Delta V here. But you can see we have the mission total Delta V. Um, this is as close as we can get right now. Uh, that number will be affected by how much delta V it's going to take to align our, our um, to bring down our relative inclination with the plan. Uh, but I'm planning on doing a maneuver that's going to minimize that, so hopefully it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, the other thing is that we need to calculate the Titan, uh, the moon orbital insertion delta V, and the, the total estimated delta V for our uh, mid-course corrections. So just off the top of my head for mid-course corrections, I'm going to estimate, I don't know, just to be safe, let's estimate 300 meters per second. I really don't think it's going to take that much, but let's just be safe there. Um, and then we will come back to this in just a minute. But what we're looking at here below that, uh, this is pretty accurate according to what, we, what we've calculated so far. Uh, so we're right at the 10-year mark. So um, we're within what we have planned on hitting. So that is good news. Uh, that's three. Here's the days: uh, 3,659 days, 10.03 years. So uh, everything there looks good. Now, what we need to calculate uh, before we wrap up this part and um, start the flight, actually, is we need to calculate the um, our arrival at uh, at Titan. So uh, there is another spreadsheet, and this is a big thanks to Dimitri. By the way, uh, this spreadsheet here came from David. I modified it uh, quite a bit here, but um, thanks to David for sharing his, uh, his spreadsheet for calculating, um, I think it was for going from Earth to Mercury, but I was able to make it work for, for our purposes. But a uh, big thank you for, to David Courtney for sharing that spreadsheet with me. And also a huge thanks to Dimitri for uh, helping me out with everything he, he did. And this this spreadsheet here is going to be really useful for our arrival at Titan. And that is going to be our goal. So beginning at the top, we're going to go to select the arrival planet. Um, that's going to be Saturn. Let me just move this over here. It didn't move for you guys, but it did for me. It's easier to look at it on the monitor in front of me. Um, and then the arrival moon is going to be Titan. So Titan, where are you? There you are. Okay, now we need to input some data in the green fields here. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna calculate three different options for arriving at Saturn. So beginning with, there's a, there's a single burn option, there's a two burn option, and a three burn option. Now before we complete this spreadsheet, let's take a look at what those are. So the single burn solution is uh, the simplest of the three strategies using only one burn. 
the moon orbit insertion burn to achieve our goal. Other than simplicity, this method has the advantage of not adding any flight time to our journey, since the time we arrive at the moon periapsis is also the time we arrive at planet periapsis. Useful for almost every case where you have a big moon orbiting a huge planet. The delta V requirement rises with the encounter velocity and the relative inclination. So you can see, um, again, Dimitri, huge thanks. He, he put together these graphics. I mean, the guy is just amazing. But you can see we have uh, the sun here. And uh, we would be coming out here to Saturn in this example. And uh, here would be our arrival at uh, the moon that's orbiting Saturn here. And then here is our burn to get an orbit around that moon. It's pretty straightforward. Basically, you encounter the moon uh, as you approach Saturn. So in this case, again, we're trying to go to Titan. So as we approach Saturn, we would basically set it up so we encounter Titan. And then we would do a burn by Titan to get an orbit around Titan. So that's going to involve a huge burn because we need to basically get captured by Saturn in, in effect, but also get an orbit around Titan. So this, this is one strategy that we will consider. The other one is a two burn solution. So this one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, in this solution, we take advantage of the Oberth effect to minimize the delta V required to arrive at our target moon. We perform a burn as close as we can to the planet to get captured and lower our apoapsis altitude at the moon's orbital altitude. If timed correctly, we arrive at apoapsis at the same time as the moon. Then we perform a second burn for orbit insertion. So basically, this option is, you know, is explained. You can see clearly from the graphics, we would be coming in like this. In the center would be Saturn, and this is Titan's orbit around Saturn. So we would come in like this for a really low pass by Saturn, taking advantage of the Oberth effect. We would do a retrograde burn just above Saturn's atmosphere, and that would basically uh, get us both captured by Saturn, and we would keep burning until our orbit altitude, our apoapsis altitude, matched the altitude of Titan's orbit. And if we time it right, when we coast from periapsis here by Saturn up to our apoapsis, Titan and us will arrive there at the same time. So then here we are arriving at Titan. We do another burn here at Titan just to get an orbit around Titan. So this option is, uh, is certainly something we should consider. And the final one is a three burn option. So this one is once again taking advantage of the Oberth effect to minimize delta V. Uh, we perform the burn as close as we can to the planet to get captured. We lower our apoapsis at a pre-selected high altitude. So in this example, we would do a burn here by Saturn, but we would have a really high, really high apoapsis, uh, but still within Saturn's SOI. So we would do the burn here just above Saturn's atmosphere, coast way high up here to our apoapsis, come back down this direction. And oh, I'm sorry, we would do the first burn here, and then we would coast way high up here to our apoapsis, do another burn here, and that would set up our encounter on this side with Titan. So this one is probably the most complicated, obviously, of the three options, but that is one, uh, one of the things that we can, we can choose. So let's go to our spreadsheet and let's take a look at uh, the delta velocity required for all three of these options and uh, also the, the additional time of flight days that it's going to add because that's something we need to consider. We need to sort of balance how much delta V it's going to take and how many extra days it would take for these options. Um, over here we have some basic data on Saturn. You can see the SOI, strong SOI in distance away from Saturn. Uh, the moon's distance, so in this case is Titan's distance, and Titan's orbital period is 15.95 days uh, in order for it to complete one orbit around Saturn. Okay, so um, from our uh, data and orbiter, what we need to input is from our encounter view here. We need the encounter velocity, the relative inclination with the moon, and the parking orbit altitude. So our encounter velocity with Saturn is 13,120. So let's put that in here. Let's go to our spreadsheet. So 13,120 meters per second. 
All right, now we need to know the relative inclination with the moon. If we take a look at here, we can see our arrival at Saturn. So our inclination is 28.05, so we need to calculate this. So uh, let's go, we have our inclination is here. Uh, let's our inclination is here at our arrival at Saturn and our longitude of the ascending node is there. Uh, we also need to know what, um, what tightens it. So I believe we go to orbit, reference, Sorry, I'm just trying to remember all of this. Dimitri showed me the other day, and I think I have it, but it's just taking my brain a little bit to uh, process it all. But yes, we can see Titan's inclination is here, and the longitude of the ascending node is here. So in the spreadsheet, in the uh, we're going to calculate the relative inclination from uh, what our inclination and the longitude of the ascending node is at our arrival at Saturn, and what Titan's uh, inclination and longitude of the ascending node is. So let's go to our spreadsheet, and let's put those numbers in. So our inclination was, our inclination at arrival will be 28.05, and our longitude of the ascending node at arrival is 132.6. And Titan's inclination is 27.69, and its longitude of the ascending node is 169.10. So that's a relative inclination of 16.84, so let's put that in here, 16.84. Now our parking orbit at Titan, um, it has a really thick atmosphere, and if I'm not mistaken, the atmosphere goes up to like... 500 kilometers, so let's put a parking orbit at 600 kilometers. Okay, now for the two burn solution, we would do we would do that at just above the atmosphere of Saturn, so that should be 3,000 kilometers. Saturn's atmosphere cuts off at uh, 2,900 kilometers, so let's do the burn at 3,000 kilometers. And then for the three burn solution, the uh, really high apoapsis, it needs to be within the strong SOI of Saturn. Now we can play around with this number and see how it will affect both the delta V and the time of flight days. So the, the furthest we could go out would be around 24 million kilometers. So let's put in two, four, zero, 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 zero. So taking a look at our strategy here, uh, if we do the single burn method, so in other words, if we basically encounter Titan as soon as we get to Saturn and just do a burn at Titan, forgetting about dropping down to Saturn and all of that, that's going to take 8,694 meters per second in order to do that burn. So in order to basically uh, encounter Saturn, get captured by, uh, I'm sorry, encounter Titan, get captured by Titan and get into orbit around Titan. Now compare that with the two burn solution. Uh, the total delta velocity is actually quite a bit less, 6,149 days. So basically the first burn we would do at 3,000 kilometers above Saturn's uh, surface. So it's what just, uh, just barely above Saturn's atmosphere, but that maximizes the overearth effect. So that first burn um, basically is just a, a capture burn and brings our apoapsis down to uh, the altitude of Titan's orbit. We're looking at 3,215 meters per second. And then the second burn to um, when we arrive at Titan to get an orbit around Titan is another 2,933 meters per second. So that's a total of 6,149 meters per second. Uh, that's quite a bit less. Now the downside is that it adds 3.03 days to our flight time. That's not really a, a lot of time. So um, considering the delta V savings, I'm favoring this two burn solution. However, let's take a look at the three burn solution. Now this will vary depending on how high we set that apo apoapsis. Again, if we take a look at uh, the way that works, you're coming in here, you do a burn right above Saturn's atmosphere, and then you coast up to a really high uh, apoapsis. You do another burn here to set up an encounter on the other side at Titan. Now how high this apoapsis goes will affect both the delta V that it's going to take and the time of flight. So if we go back to our calculator, 
we want it to be within the strong SOI of Saturn, and uh, that's within it's that's within 24 million 457 thousand 440 kilometers um, or less. Now I put it at 24 million, and you can see that uh, the delta V is 4,217 meters per second. So that's way less than the one burn solution, and it's less than the two burn solution. However, it adds 512 days. And that's just not going to cut it because remember we were looking at maybe just over 100 days at Saturn. So uh, that's just not going to work. So if we bring this down to say 10 million, I think that would be 10 million, that reduces it to 146 days and our delta V goes up to 4518. Uh, that's still too long. Just for grins, let's try 5 million. So 5 million takes another 57 days, but it is less delta V than the two burn solution. So really, I think our best option here, considering it's a manned flight, we need to sort of balance the time of flight days with the delta V. We're going to do the two burn solution. So we're looking at 6,149 meters per second total delta velocity for our arrival at Saturn and orbital insertion around Titan. So we need to put that in our spreadsheet, 6149. So that goes here, 61.49. Okay, and so that's been adjusted. So our spreadsheet is done for the moment. The last thing that we will input is uh, the plane change burn here for Deep Star. Uh, again, that will come later once we're up to Deep Star. So we're looking at, at this point, a total of 31,735 meters per second and delta V for the entire flight. Uh, but that is not including any delta V that we'll need to go to other moons around Saturn. So we're really going to have to guess for that part because unfortunately I just don't know how much it's going to take. But the deep star really has plenty of delta V and so I don't anticipate any major problems there. Uh, the to total time of flight days does not change. We're looking at 10 years for the entire mission. Okay, I just want to add a quick addendum to the spreadsheet. Um, the re I realized uh, when I was editing the video that the mission total delta V didn't quite look right, and I think the reason is because it was taking into consideration the capture delta V at Saturn uh, as well as the Titan MOI delta V, and I believe the Titan MOI delta V uh, is it covers both Saturn capture and uh, orbital insertion at Titan. So I don't think we need to add these two numbers together. I think we just need to take the Titan MOI delta V number. So I've adjusted that calculation so that it only uh, takes that number uh, along with uh, with everything else, but it does not include the that, that capture delta V there at Saturn. Um, the other thing I did is I added a line here for additional moon trips, and I am just purely guessing here because I honestly don't know how much delta V it's going to take because number one I don't know how many moons we're going to have time to go to based on the time frame that we will be at Saturn and number two I have no idea how much delta V it's going to take to go from one moon to the next so just throwing a number out there I put 10,000 meters per second if Dimitri or anyone else has a better guess um you know, leave leave it in the comments below. But again, it's all going to be totally dependent on how many moons we can visit. And I think we're going to be constrained by both time and delta V when it comes to that. Now, I'm not planning on cutting things super close on fuel with Deep Star. But like I said, it has a stupid amount of delta V. So I'm not going to just fill the tanks up uh, or fill the, you know, the one main tank up with a, you know, completely full so um, with that said, I think we'll still have plenty of Delta V left over to visit several moons. So that is, uh, that is the plan. I just made those couple of changes that I felt I really needed to cover uh, uh, here at the end of the video. So with all of that said, this episode took way longer than I anticipated. Um, I, I hope it wasn't too incredibly boring for you guys. Um, for me, I really love this, this planning the thing, uh, planning the flight out and, you know, going to the outer solar system, it just makes sense to really spend some time planning things out. Um, yeah, so in episode one, the, the next episode, we're going to get off the ground using the Dragon atop Falcon 9. It's going to be carrying our crew up to Deep Star. I believe we should be able to complete that entire flight in episode one. 
And then going forward, we, of course, will uh, be on our journey out to Saturn. So we have some exciting times to come. And um, I can't wait to share it with you guys. So as always, I hope you guys are doing really well. I wish you all the best. I want to thank you very much for watching. Again, please do leave me comments uh, below. I always love reading your comments. It makes my day to, to get your feedback on the, on the series and whatnot. So uh, until episode one, take care, guys, and we'll see you then.